Welcome to the Couch Cook. Today we're making lavash, a Turkish pita that goes incredible on its own or with shakshuka, a North African slash Middle Eastern tomato stew that I've made in another video. Let's jump right into it. Let's start by gathering our ingredients here. Here we have three and a half cups of all-purpose flour, two teaspoons of fine sea salt, two and a half teaspoons of active dry yeast, two teaspoons of sugar, four tablespoons of butter, one and a quarter cups of warm water, some extra flour for dusting, and a mix of white and black sesame seeds. To get started, the first thing that we're gonna to wanna to do is melt our butter. You could do this by throwing it in a saucepan, but I'll just throw mine in the microwave for about 20 seconds. While that is melting, take your warm water, your sugar and your yeast, combine them together. Give it a nice little stir here. This will help activate the yeast and set it aside for about 15 minutes or until the water is nice and frothy on the top. We'll come back to this when it's ready and I'll show you exactly what we're looking for. So we'll just set it aside for now. All right, our melted butter is melted and now we're just gonna set that aside. And while that is coming together, we will combine our flour with our salt for now. And then just, you know, mix it in there a bit. We don't want any clumps of salt in your flour, so just mix it in and make sure that it's evenly dispersed. And set it aside, we're just waiting for the yeast now before we continue. This is exactly what we're looking for with our yeast. We want it to be nice and foamy and frothy, almost like a cappuccino, a yeast chino. That's what we're looking for. Why did I say that? All right, now we're gonna combine all of the wet ingredients into our dry ingredients. What we'll do here, we'll create a little well. This is in the center of the flour here. We create a little well, just like this. And this allows for us to pour the wet ingredients into, and this just helps mix the dough a lot more smoothly than if you were to just pour it in on top. So we'll add our butter that's cooled down to about room temperature here, along with the yeast mixture. And what we'll do is we'll just gently start working it from the center of the well, combining a bit of flour at a time. The more flour you add, the more cohesive it becomes. And then you get to start adding it all together like this. You could start this whole process with your hands from the beginning, but I do like to use a spoon. It just makes it a little less tacky and keeps it a little bit cleaner. So now that I've brought it all together like this, I ditch my spoon and I start working it with my hands. Kind of bringing this shaggy dough together, starting to form a ball. And once you have a cohesive dough, you just throw it onto your work surface. At this point, you don't need any extra flour because uh, you got lots of flour still to mix into the dough. And we'll just start kneading it. We wanna knead it until it's nice and smooth. This may take a few minutes. And as we go along, we just add a little bit of the pieces that fall off back into it. If you start to feel your dough get tacky and sticking to the cutting board, that's when you can add a little bit more flour. Depending on the climate you're in, if you're in a really humid spot, you might need less or more flour than where I am here in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. It's kind of a bit by feel, but if you're sticking to your board or your work surface, add just a little bit more. If it's coming off clean like you're seeing here, you don't need to add any more flour. All right, so this is what we're looking for. We want a nice smooth surface on our dough and you can see that it's got some good gluten development here. It's not shaggy, it's all cohesive. We're gonna rest this for about 15 minutes and then we'll knead it again. So we'll put it in a bowl here, just lightly greased with a little bit of olive oil. I grease the bowl up good, just so it doesn't stick in there. Put your dough in the bowl and then cover it with a tea towel or cling film. And let it rest for about 15 minutes and we'll come back to it. Okay, so it's been about 15 minutes. We're not really looking for the dough to rise at this point. We just want the dough to relax. And if I'm being completely honest with you, I don't know exactly why we do this first fold, but I find that it just puffs better. And we know 
the best thing about a pita is how puffy it is. That's how we know it's a good pita, if it puffs up. So I find my pitas rise best when I do a double proof like this. So we'll just take it out, a couple quick kneads like this. You can tell that this dough is nice and relaxed. It feels completely different than it did even 15 minutes ago. And it even looks different. Look how nice and smooth it is now. <laughs> you see the similarity? That's what we're going for, okay? Point of reference. <laughs> okay, so now we will put it back in our bowl and just leave it uh, covered at room temperature. Probably get a take until it's double in size, double in size. So depending on the temperature of the room in your house, uh, it could take an hour, but it could also take up to two hours. So we're gonna put it somewhere where it's nice and warm, where it can rise, wherever that is in your house. Good night, little baby. And we're gonna just do a nice little light dusting here on the work surface. So it just doesn't stick when we turn it out. We also have our sesame seeds here that we'll uh, be using in a bit here. We're just gonna turn this out here and we're gonna knock it down, knock this down. And we're gonna create like a little rectangle that we can get six even portions out of. But here we're gonna cut it into half lengthwise and then into thirds. Ensuring they're like approximately the same size. It's not, like I said, doesn't need to be exact, but they'll just help by cooking a little bit more evenly. There we go. So six portions. And then we're gonna roll these back into balls. So I fold them, I fold the bottoms like this, and then I just shape them into little balls like such. I'll just put them here. So fold, 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 fold. just kind of pinching at the bottom of each ball, just kind of pinching like into a little balloon. Just making it smooth. Fold. Fold, fold, fold. Cover them with some sort of wrap so they don't dry out. You could use your tea towel as well that you originally used. Kind of let them chill out for about 15 minutes before we finish them off. Okay, so we're ready here. We're gonna roll these out. We're gonna finalize them up, but first we need to grease up a baking sheet. So I just give it a nice little drizzle of olive oil and then just rub it in all corners. This will prevent your pita from sticking. So take one roll, one ball, and press it flat with your hands. And we gotta roll this. The goal is as thin as possible. So if it's still, if you feel like it's really tacky, make sure you uh, dust your work surface. But my wooden countertop does really good for absorbing moisture and doesn't need a whole lot extra. And as you see, I'm just constantly rotating the dough just to keep that round disc shape. We're not quite there yet, but I will sprinkle my sesame seeds on it here and we're gonna roll them into the pita. There we go, this is about an eighth of an inch thick, and that's probably exactly what we want. Maybe a little bit thinner. All right, so now we're ready. We're gonna throw these into the oven. It's gonna take roughly about eight minutes, but we gotta keep an eye on it. Once they start puffing up, we gotta turn the pan around and then cook it until they're nice and golden brown. So about eight minutes total, but let's keep an eye on it. Here. We'll initially set the timer for four minutes, and then halfway through, we're gonna turn the pan around so it, tur uh, it cooks more evenly. They're rising, look at that, catch this. All right, so it's about halfway through the cooking time. It's been about four minutes. We're gonna turn it around in the oven, the baking tray. Whoa, look at them puff up, guys. This is what we're looking for. Woo! Turn it around, put it back in. Three minutes, three minutes, just until it's nice and brown like that. When it gets that coloration, we're good. Take them out, take them out. That's it, so about three minutes. Dude, those are sick. 
what? I need to. Yes! There we go. Pita. Woo! That is it. We made lavash. How easy is that? It was so fun, so easy, and really they're so delicious. You can just enjoy them just as they are on their own, like this, you know, spread a little bit of butter, dunk it in some olive oil, sprinkle a little salt on it, spread some goat cheese, you know, you could really just keep it simple like that. And or, just throwing this out there, you can enjoy it with this venison meatball shakshuka that we fixed up. This with this equals this. And I already did you a solid. I made a video for this that I'll link in this video that you can go and make this exact one with. And you're set. Just like that. Thanks guys. Love and peace. Right, I don't know what that is.